So, so you basically started from wanting to create a travel blog. Yeah. The travel blog that you have is really interesting, and I've de I've definitely followed you on some of your travels. <laughs> and one of my favorite things that I feel like like Mama Cax gifted to me was um, you were on this trip and you wrote about it when you're in Morocco and you were gonna get some spa treatment. And a lot of times in other countries, you find out very quickly when you're gonna get a spa treatment, you get fully, full on naked. Yes, you do. <laughs> fully. You get this tiny thong. Yeah, and um. you're like, this is, this is a joke, <laughs> this actually. Is it. This is not even gonna help me. The woman who is supposed to be helping you, giving you your services, just mm -hmm. like had a full on meltdown. Yeah. Cause like, cause I'm assuming you went through chemo, you did treatment. Yeah, I and did. And so when you, when you go through that, I have the same thing. It's like you have like your G-tube scar, all your scars, mm -hmm. port scars, like, and then alongside your amputation. And yeah. because you're so high up, they had to like, move organs over mm -hmm. um, and she just could not could not hang. I was not the same person that I was four years ago and it really helped me cope with that specific situation. Yeah. When I was in college, mm -hmm. a friend of mine asked me questions about, you know, what was wrong because then again it was that time when I was, you know, hiding everything. So people only knew, knew me as the girl who always had crutches. Um, and when she asked me, I told her what happened. I had the amputation and right away she started crying. And to me, it's like, I didn't know what to do. And I found myself sort of like, you know, um, telling her, yeah, I'm fine now. Just like consoling her. And it just left the bittersweet taste in general. Because here I was, someone who actually had gone through this. Um, but now I'm feeling bad about, you know, telling my story. Yeah. So now back to the spa, like maybe four years after the experience with my classmate, I just kind of like stood my ground. I was like, if, if you're gonna cry the whole time, maybe we should get someone else in here. And that was a way of like protecting my own emotions and my own space. Life in general is traumatic. Mm -hmm. And so is limb loss. And so is having limb, limb loss from an illness. When I had moved and started doing track full time in Phoenix, yeah. I was seeing a sports psychologist and I was talking to him, I'm like, you know, things are going fine, but mm -hmm. X, Y, Z in a competition, I'll get kind of anxious or rattled. Yeah. And there was patterns and he was, he mentioned, he's like, he's like, maybe it's worth considering that you have a little PTSD. And of course mm -hmm. I was like, I'm strong. I don't, I don't need you. Yeah. Like you have PTSD. Like I don't. So finally I cool, I cooled down and I would, I, I realized that like maybe there's, mm -hmm. maybe just from the reaction alone, there was some, some like <laughs> residual, some, <slight laughs> some stuff waiting for me. Yeah. And, um, and so I went through treatment with him and it's almost like I had like a, like a click when I read that article because mm -hmm. there is something I think as well for people who experience trauma is they take that, they take on their trauma as their responsibility. Mm -hmm. Almost as if yeah. like it was, it's not that it's their fault, but that, that it's like they are accountable for it. Mm -hmm. And like, meanwhile, yes, we are responsible and we're accountable in our lives. At the same time, like we don't owe the explanation. We don't owe it to other people to accommodate their feelings. Exactly. And that was, and that was the thing at that moment. It's yeah. like, I'm not going to accommodate your feeling. I'm not going to let your pettiness like, have me cater to you at yeah, this point. Yeah, you're it's like, my I'm time. here for me. <laughs> so, exactly. I feel like now, with the, with the help of you, mm -hmm. like I have like this flag too, where I'm like, we don't need to accommodate other uh, people's yeah, comfort levels exactly. because we're different. And I think I, in terms of accommodating other people, kids who get scared, I have to be the one comforting them, not only them, but also their parent. I realized it still wasn't my job to do so. Yeah. It's, it's a hard ba battle because like, it's not even about politeness. At the mm -hmm. same time, you're like, what about politeness to myself? Exactly, that's the thing. P people always seem to think that you have to make everyone else comfortable um, and not think about yourself. Yeah. And to me, I just, whenever someone wants to ask a question, I always tell them, just think of it this way. Think of me um, going through this world, being asked the same questions every single day. Chances are whatever question you're gonna ask me, someone has asked me the same question three minutes ago. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that, that's true. how, <laughs> I mean, I feel like a lot of the times I sort of like engage in answer, but I also owe no one my story. Yeah. And I have bad days, I have good days. So it's gonna depend on my it mood and people have to accept that, you know? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. everybody's having a sunshiny exactly. day. You know? And sometimes you are, and sometimes you're like, oh, sit down, I'll give you the whole spiel. <laughs> but we kind of connected through something that, a project that we worked together with Refinery29 on yeah. body positivity. And that was one of the first times actually that I took some photos. So we were all in bathing suits, bikinis. Yeah. 
What's the bikini shoot? I shot mine in the cold. Oh no. At the beach in New York, but I made it look warm. It looked warm. It did look warm. <laughs> I was in Arizona. I was I was objectively warm. But uh, that was actually one of the first times that I've done some shoots with my prosthesis off. That sh that shoot in particular was about body positivity. Was about celebrating people who have different types of bodies. Mm -hmm. That seems to have been kind of something where your platform is really launched off. Yeah. Um, and so what? What kind of was there? Was there like a particular turning point or a pinnacle moment where you're like, "This is my shtick," or like, has that always kind of been your story? No, I think I'd always hear about body positivity in general because it was kind of like a big thing on social media at this point. But I think it started from a movement where it was people who were who were just um, tired of kind of like the skinny status quo and just wanted to show a different body and ex not only accept their own but get other women to accept their bodies. I think on my end is just there was always a missing narrative like I I didn't see you know women in scars represented or you know people with limb differences or amputees in general and I just thought there needed to be change in that movement in general. I I thought it should be a celebration of any marginalized bodies yeah. so it could be um, someone who, you know, changed gender or, yeah. um, and in my case, someone who had a lot of scars from my surgery. Yeah. Um, and I think the reason why I jumped on the bandwagon to do that project was mainly for myself. I was just like, okay, I, in my personal life, I hate going to the beach because there's always that thing where I have to like take off my legs, like put it on the ground. Yeah. And then Crawl. people are staring. <laughs> Go on your crutches. Try to cover it with a towel, but mm. it's so long that a towel can never cover it. You know. Goodbye. That's like all <laughs> And you have kids like crying and stuff. And then there's always the part where I try to have my bathing suit cover every section, and it just takes so much out of you emotionally to try to like fit in, try to make people, other people comfortable. Yeah. So it was my time to do something for myself, and I did it. I didn't regret it, um, but once it came out, I sort of like cringed. I was like, oh my God, why did I do I it? I the same way. Like, <laughs> but I, about myself, not you. <laughs> <laughs> you were wonderful. <laughs> but I think once it came out, the sort of like um, feedback that I got from everyone and people just, you know, really relating to it in general, it was just amazing. You were saying earlier, like, you know, to represent marginalized bodies, and mm -hmm. I think about like people with disabilities as a demographic and we are actually the largest minority in the whole world yeah like it's yeah. so funny because like we take everyone we will take any anyone and everyone yeah exactly and anyone can be part of that group at any at moment any in in their life you know yeah. um, whether temporary or you know um, permanent um, and it crosses so many other groups like yeah. uh, gender race ethnicity all of that so yeah you would think that would make people more conscious to um, include um, people with disabilities, but it's still not the case. No. Um, especially working in kind of like borderline fashion, I see it even more now. But even in when you're looking at brands, you know, there's there's still that um, lack yeah, of it's um, yeah inclusion, that lack of inclusion. And I've gone to several talk where the focus is talking about inclusion in fashion and how that's changing. And from the panel, it's always like you know, women of color, it's always, um, you know, people who are not size zeros, um, different walks of lives and all that kind of stuff, but disability is never something they think about because it, it's almost as if they don't look at it as an identity.